we are on the 11th week of the program in fact 11th session um have been we have been doing quite well in the program so far and uh, we have just a couple of weeks uh, sessions to go rather uh, so uh, your uh, assessments will be online pretty soon um i saw the quiz uh, getting built and uh, by tomorrow it will be available for you to work out and also there's an another assessment and also maybe a third quiz and that will be um, all for the assessments. Uh, you will uh, be given one month to complete all of these things, quizzes, assignments, and you can submit directly to the learning management system. And uh, we will uh, evaluate all these things and your certificates will be ready uh, after about a week, uh, a month or five weeks. All right, good. So uh, today uh, we are going to talk about uh, um, an employee, you're right, I'm sure you are going to build your startups at some point of time. You're going to work with your subordinates. You're going to employ people working under you. And you need to know uh, the rules of the game, right? Uh, what, what are the rules you have to abide by, your responsibilities uh, in uh, handling your subordinates and also your rights. So we have Professor uh, Rosha Adhikarama. Uh, she's waiting to talk to you. Thank you, Professor Arosha, for joining us this evening. We really appreciate it. And uh, after Professor Arosha, we have uh, Dr. Tesara Yawadana. Today is a female show, right? They are taking over the whole proceedings this evening. And uh, Dr. Tesara Yawadana will talk to you about um, uh, SWOT analysis, pastel analysis, uh, the, how to evaluate your competitors, how to enter to a market, and how to leave out of a market if you decide so, right? So these are very, very important things that um, um, that is ahead of us. So uh, now let me um, uh, invite uh, Warangana to formally introduce our speakers this evening. Warangana, over to you. Thank you, sir. Good evening to you all. Am I clearly audible? Yes, you are. Okay. Let me share my screen. Okay, well, so today our first speaker will be Professor Arusha Ezadikara. So, Professor Arusha is the Chair Professor of Human Resource Management at the Faculty of Management and Finance, University of Colombo. She has over 20 years experience in the areas of labor law and relations. Professor Adhikaram is a former head of the Department of Human Resource Management coordinator of the Executive Master of Business Administration and acting director of the Center for Gender Equality at the University of Colombo. Recently, she served as a senior academic expert for a World Bank funded project under the Ministry of Higher Education. Before joining the academy, she worked for John Gills Holdings Group HR department. So Professor Adhikaram has authored many books and book chapters by national and international publisher, publishers and has published her research intensively in ranked indexed mainly in the areas of human resource management, labor law, industrial relations, gender issues in organizations. She has won numerous awards for her academic leadership and research. She is a board member of the Center for Women's Research and a council member of the Chartered Institute of Personal Management. She is, a, she is also a current member of the Education Committee and was a former chairperson of the Education Reforms Committee of Sri Lanka Institute of Marketing. So let me cordially invite Professor Arosha to continue. Over to you, Madam. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello. I hope I can share my... Can you hear me? <coughs> Hello. 
Yes, I can hear you, Professor Arash. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'll share my screen. Okay. So good evening, everyone. Um, um, today you'll be uh, learning about a very important aspect when it comes to starting your own business, becoming an entrepreneur. Um, that's on labor law and relations for SMEs, entrepreneurs, for employers, and also for employees as well. Um, so it's a pleasure to be a part of this uh, uh, program, which is a very important program as I, uh, I, as I see a need, a national need that is being addressed. So uh, let's proceed. So what we uh, will be discussing today would be to see why it is important for you to know your rights, responsibilities, and immunities as an employer, so that you will um, have uh, you will know how to um, manage your employees, how to make sure that they get the right terms and conditions, and. Uh, we will also very briefly discuss how do you enter into a contract of employment and what are the main terms and conditions you should provide for your employees. Uh, knowing this at the start of a business, that's at the start of a, a starting a business, being an entrepreneur is very, very important because that will give you a lot of advantages and avoid help you avoid numerous legal implications that can arise if you do not adhere to the legal requirements of the country. So please, if you have any questions, if you want any clarifications on what I'm discussing, you can um, raise your virtual hand or you can just uh, send me a message on the chat and we will see given the time how we can address this as well. So first of all, uh, if we are to see why it is important for us to know our rights and responsibilities as well as immunities as an employer, if you are starting, if you are thinking of starting a business, it's very important that you know these, you know, your rights, responsibilities, and uh, immunities. Why? Because we have numerous laws on terms and conditions of employment in Sri Lanka. So uh, this is what we call labor law. So in Sri Lanka, we have more than 40 laws that specifically talk about employment, terms and conditions and other aspects of employment. So we have more than 40 or so laws um, related to labor, so labor laws. Therefore, it's very important uh, that we know them. Uh, as you know, legislation tells you what you need to do and what you should do and what you should not do. And uh, you not knowing this legislation will lead to, as I said earlier also, numerous legal implications. So um, you need to stay up to date on all current laws and regulations related to labor law. Um, we have um, certain amendments being introduced to these existing laws. So you need to know these um, uh, amendments, what are the up-to-date, you know, facts, uh, terms and conditions. And um, it's, of course, as you know, it's a must that you adhere to legal requirements. If it's um, a legislative requirement, it's a must that you adhere to it. Otherwise, you can get into legal um, issues. So if you do not adhere to these um, terms and conditions or labor laws or provisions in labor laws in the country, it will lead to legal implications. Of course, it will be a cost to the company if you if uh, your employees file a case against you, either in the labor department or in the uh, labor tribunal, or there are the places that they can go to. If they do, take action against the company if you do not adhere to these uh, legal requirements and if the employee takes action against you, um, you'll have to uh, spend your money, your effort, your time. Um, so it's a cost, definite cost to the company. And also, if you do not adhere to this legislation, it can give rise to disputes um, among the employees, but mostly between you and the employees. 
right? So they would demand certain things that are their rights, really. And it can lead to disputes. It can lead to trade union action in certain instances. So there can be a lot of issues that arise if you do not adhere to legal requirements. And all of this will lead to negative image for the organization. You might be known as a company that do not provide the basic terms and conditions to employees. And you know nowadays with the, with the social media, uh, bringing these issues up, it can even um, you know, lead to a company closure. You know, especially if it's a startup, if it's a smaller company, uh, these legal issues can uh, lead, uh, can cost the company where it leads to the company, you know, going into bankruptcy or the negative image uh, can lead to its closure. So therefore it's important that you understand these legal requirements. So we will first start so there are a lot, like I said, so since there are 40 or so, more than 40 labor laws in the country, it's very, um, you know, there are so many things that you need to do. No. Uh, so I will very briefly sort of guide you, show you some of the areas that you need to be concerned about. So the first thing that we need to look into is when you start up your own business, start your own business when you have a company, uh, or when you're even thinking of starting up a company, you need to, uh, you will of course think of employing people. So when you employ a person, you will of course be entering into a contract of employment with your employees. So you will have a contractual relationship with your employees. So before you actually decide to enter into a contract of employment with an employee, with somebody, you need to, of course, first carefully consider the need. You will have to look at, you know, look at your business plan, look at uh, the strategies and all of that and decide, you know, come up with a HR plan, human resource plan. You need to decide how many employees you would need to do what. And so you need to make this decision very carefully because um, uh, if you hire more people than you would need, that is an issue. If you have lower number of people that you, than you need, that is also an issue. So you need to carefully consider your need. And of course, you have to decide what type of a person you would hire, whether you would need a permanent employee, for the, for the need, for to fulfill the need that you have, or whether you need a temporary employee, whether you need a casual employee, whether a fixed term employee would be enough for you to fulfill the need that you have, whether you will need seasonal employees for the company, or whether you don't really need a contract of employment, but what you need is a contract for service, or you really don't need a contract of service, but you need a contract for service. So you will have to decide these facts also very carefully. Of course, a company, when you start your organization, you cannot run it with temporary people. You know, you can't have the whole um, staff being temporary employees. You can't have the whole staff being casual employees. Nor can you have the whole staff being fixed term or seasonal. You would most probably need a few tem uh, permanent employees. So you will have to decide, okay, how many permanent employees would I have? And then you can decide for certain type of job, you, jobs you don't really need permanent employees. Uh, it can be fixed term employees where you hire them for a fixed time period. So after the end of that fixed term, the fixed time period, your contract with that employee would end. That's what a fixed term contract means. So you would say, okay, I need a person only for one year, only for six months. I have this project. Uh, which will end in six months. So you would not need a permanent employee, right? For that project, you would only need fixed term employees, one or a few fixed term employees for that six months project or one year project or two year project. So if you have those, you know, fixed time period projects, you would hire the more suitable employee for you to hire would be fixed term employees. 
So when you enter into your contract with the employee, you would very clearly tell them, okay, this is a fixed term employee month and the, and the uh, contract will only be there for six months or one year or two years. And at the end of that specific time period, the contract that I that the company has with you, the employee, will end automatically. So there would not be any termination of employee. Then there will be seasonal um, employees that you would need for certain startups, for certain businesses. You would only need people for a specific season or you would need more people, more employees for a specific season only. So then you will hi hire seasonal employees. So at the end of the season, the employment will also end. So they are also not permanent employees. And then you will, uh, for some jobs, you will need casual employees. You know, it might be a very uh, a work of um, irregular nature. It might not constitute a main business activity. It will be a, a you know, very regular need that arises in the company. And you will hire a casual employee and the and generally casual employee will work for a company for a very small time period and then they will leave. Or you would already have a permanent employee who might now go on maternity leave, maybe, or, or, or go on a long-term sick leave. Now you would need somebody to fill that temporary need that arises in the company. Then you will hire a temporary employee. So why, so when you decide there is a need, need to decide, therefore, the type of employment also, whether it's going to be a temporary employer, casual employee, fixed term, seasonal, you know, permanent employee that you need or part-time employee that you need, because the terms and conditions will differ for these different types of employments. Okay, certain terms will be the same, but especially how the contract will end and the right employee has when a contract ends will differ depending on the will depend on the type of employment. Uh, for example, a fixed term employee, once the fixed term time period is over, cannot say this is unfair termination and go and seek relief in a labor tribunal. No, can they? go to uh, another uh, uh, another legislation which we call termination of employment of workmen's act and say this is unfair termination reinstate me in the job so they don't have the right to go to this different uh, or seek relief in these different labor laws um, if they are they are fixed term employees so like that the terms and conditions that apply to employees will dip will depend on the type of employment. Another example would be, now seasonal, if you have a seasonal employee, they would not be covered under uh, maternity benefits ordinance. So you don't, if it's a seasonal uh, employee, a female employee who goes on, mat, uh, who is pregnant, you don't need to give her maternity benefits or leave or maternity benefits legally it's not a requirement to give these benefits uh, and if they are covered under maternity benefits ordinance so like that the terms differ it's also important to identify whether you need a contract for service or contract of service now contract of service is the normal employment contract that we talk about you know this temporary casual fixed term seasonal especially permanent employees will generally have a contract of service with the company. But you would also have certain um, work that you would, you know, give somebody else to do, uh, give a contractor to perform. You know, you would not have a contract of service or so employment with that party. You will have a contract. You will have a contractor. You will give out work, work to a contractor. Then if it's a contract for service, none of these labor laws that we talk about applies to contract for service. I'm trying to give you another example. 
So if it's a temporary employee or a casual employee or a fixed term employee or a seasonal employee, you have to pay them EPF and ETF. But if you have a contract for service with somebody, you don't have to pay EPF and ETF to them. You are not covered, the, the contractor will not be covered by other legislations and they cannot seek relief for ending a contract with the labor tribunal or with the labor department. They cannot contest your decision to end a contract with the labor department or the labor tribunal. So they are independent contractors. So in a company, you would have such work, right? You would have something that you would need a person to do, but you decide you don't need to have a contract of service for that work. You will contract it out. Now, if I'm to give you an example for some of the work that is contracted out, maybe you decide, okay, having um, handling the salaries, the finances, the accounting aspects is not worthwhile. You are going to outsource that work to somebody. Some, you're, and you are going to concentrate on the core business of your organization. So if you outsource it, if you give it to somebody to do your salaries, you know, calculate the salaries and do other accounting and, you know, those work. Uh, if you outsource it or if you give it, to a, give it to a accountant or somebody, it can very well be a contract for service, right? Or you say, okay, you need security people to your workplace, but you don't employ a security guard. You know, you don't enter into a contract of employment with a security guard. Maybe you will outsource that work to a security company. So you will have a contract for service with the security company and they will handle everything related to the employee. You will just pay a lump sum or some amount, a monthly payment to the outsource company okay so like that some of the work you will decide you will not want to do in-house you will not want permanent employees and you will contract it out so when you do that you are not covered by many of the labor laws that we uh, discuss in terms of a contract of employee okay so therefore it's very important that you carefully consider what your need is, how, how many people you need uh, to the company to work in your organization. What do they need to do? What is the best type of employment that you are going to recruit them under? That will, uh, that is very important to decide. Okay, so we have a question, even we are doing a small business, is that necessary to give EPF and ETF to the employees? Consider he is not a permanent employee. Yes, uh, Ruzan, you have to. So EPF and ETF Act does not, you know, Act says you, whether it's a temporary employee, whether it's a casual employee, fixed term employee, seasonal employee, whatever the employment type, you need to pay them EPF and ETF. Even if it's only one employee you have, you have to pay them EPF and ETF. Now the problem is if you don't pay them EPF and ETF, and if they one day go and complain to the labor department, ETF, EPF unit, saying that they have not been paid EPF, you will have to then, you will be ordered then to pay the employee contribution, the employer contribution, a surcharge, a fine, everything for the number of years the employee had been in employment. Say you have had an employee for 10 years. You have not paid them EPS. Now, when if that person goes and complain or if the labor department gets to know of this, they will order you to pay for the 10 years the employee's 8%, the 8% the employee contributes to EPF, the 12% you contribute to EPF. So the whole 20%, the employer will have to pay. And then there'll be a fine, there'll be a surcharge, there'll be a huge amount for you to pay. And if you don't pay, the issue is, 
uh, even a casual employee, even if it's a casual employee, you have to pay EPF and ETF because in Sri Lanka, we just give the term casual. No, we just term them as casual employees, but they are, if you really look at the work that they do, they'll be permanent employees. So if you don't, uh, so there are instances where companies even had to close down because they have not paid EPF to employees, especially if it's a smaller company. You know, you have say ten, uh, three, four employees, five employees or 10 employees, and you have not paid them EPF for 10 years. And, you know, you will have to pay a huge amount to them later on when this comes to notice. And if you can't pay, your personal property will have to be sold and paid to them. And if you can't pay even then, you can even go to jail. You will be imprisoned. So it's a huge risk that some of the companies take. So that's why you need to understand what are the terms and conditions you need to provide for your employees. So we'll go into this further. So I hope you understood this part on, um, uh, this part on um, how important, um, how you enter into a contract of employment. So, but, um, uh, Ruzan, re remind me to address this uh, question later on. We are not a private limited. It's registered under business. Uh, still, it's a business. So, you have to pay EPF, ETF, and you are covered under all the labor laws that I'll be talking about today. And you'll have to provide the right terms and conditions to employees. Okay, even if you have one employee in the company. Okay, so moving on. So you have to, of course, once you decide you need a person, you need an employee, you and you decide what is the type of employment that you are going to recruit the person under, you need to engage in a very careful selection. Now, remember, again, in Sri Lanka, our labor laws are quite favorable towards employees. So unlike in many other countries, once you get recruit a person and confirm a person, it will be very difficult to terminate their services, to fire them, because we don't have the hire and fire rule in Sri Lanka, that practice in Sri Lanka. So employees, when you fire them, even if, sorry, even when they are not a permanent employee, even if it's a casual or temporary, they might still contest your decision. They might still say it's, been, it's an unfair termination of employment. And when they do, they have, when they think that it's an unfair termination, they have different avenues to seek relief. As I said, if it's a permanent employee, if it's a confirmed employee, or if it's a probationer even, um, they can go to labor tribunal and file a case saying this is unfair termination. Or they can um, go to this act that I told you earlier, Termination of Employment of Workmen's Act, and say under that act, under the provisions of Termination of Employment of Workmen's Act, this is an unfair termination. So they have numerous avenues to go to and seek relief. So then it will be a um, you know legal uh, issue, a legal case that you have where you have to spend money and effort and all of that. So the best thing for you to do is to first do your selection carefully. You need to very carefully evaluate and see whether you are recruiting the right person, right? So uh, because uh, unlike for a bigger company, especially for a smaller company, uh, wrong selection can cost you more. You know, when a person file a case against you, it will be felt more for a smaller company, unlike for a bigger company. So uh, if you have the right person, you have done the right background check, you have evaluated the ability of the person carefully, then there would be lesser chance of you terminating the services of the person. So you need to engage in a very careful selection. And then you have to enter into a proper contract of employment. Okay, so you have to enter into a proper contract of employment. It can, it, um, a contract of employment actually can be in writing, 
It can be even a verbal contract that you enter into or even implied. So a contract does not necessarily have to be in writing for it to be legally valid. Okay, so you don't have to give a letter of appointment, but it's always advisable. We always advise employers to give a written contract of employment or a letter of appointment because it clarifies things. It makes the employment relationship very peaceful and very clear. So you say, if it's a permanent employee, you are hiring, you say a letter of appointment and you state the terms and conditions under which you come into the contract. You mention about the position, the day, the start, um, on what date the contract would start, what would the salary be, what would the leave that you would provide, what would be the uh, overtime payments, how would the contract come to an end. Everything you will, if you write down, if it's properly put down, it's very clear to both parties. There'll be lesser disputes, there'll be lesser ambiguities, and you can have a more peaceful employment relationship. But as I said, it does not have to be always in writing. There are instances where you would just come to a verbal agreement. You say, okay, I'll pay you this much. You come and work for me from tomorrow onwards. But see what happens if it's verbal? The parties will be unclear of their rights and their responsibilities, right? Which can lead to issues later on. There are also instances where you come into implied employment contracts where you know, you don't even say, you know, you come to work from tomorrow onwards, I'm going to pay this much. You know, uh, you have given some work to somebody, they do it, you pay them. The next day also they come, you pay, and the contract continues. So it can even be implied. But again, I'm reiterating, it's always good to give a, give a contract in writing. I have seen in many instances, smaller companies, startups are reluctant to give a written contract thinking that it will be, you know, it will sort of spell out their legal responsibility and it will be an issue to the company. They'll be legally bound or something like that. So um, when they think that, they have to also now remember that even a verbal contract implied, uh, you know, agreement can be still legally valid. But when you give something in writing, it, uh, it sort of uh, clarifies things. So it's always good to give something in writing. And, uh, sorry. Um, and, and you have to clearly state the conditions that uh, terms and conditions of employment in line with the legal requirements. We will talk about it in a little bit, uh, in more detail in, in a little while. Um, well, we have we don't have much time, so I'll have to quickly um, uh, tell you what those are. But also, it's important that you place the person on probation, but make sure that the probation period does not exceed six months. Now, with the new legislation, the minimum retirement age of private sector employees act, there is a probation period that is enforced. Um, sort of said 180 days or so six months. So you need to place a person on probation. You can place a person on probation for six months. And during this time, you can carefully evaluate the person. And if you think the person is not suitable for the organization, you can easily terminate the services of the person during that time period. But once you confirm the person, it will be more difficult to terminate the services of the person. So make the decision whether you are going to keep the person um, uh, confirm the person or not very carefully during the probation period because that's the best time you get to uh, get rid of a person, get rid of an employee if you think the person is not suitable. So as an employee, you will, employer, you will have, your employees will either be covered under, sorry, there is a spelling mistake here, Shop and Office Employees Act or a wages board. So you have to first see whether your employees are covered under the Shop and Office Employees Act or Wages Board and accordingly provide the 
provide these terms and conditions. So the salaries, the leave, holidays, overtime, maternity benefits, EPF, ETF, gratuity, retirement, all of that uh, will have to be in line with the legal requirement. Um, so if it's a shop and office employee, uh, em employee that you are hiring, if your employees are covered under shop and office employees act, so your employees will be covered under either under shop and office employees act or one of the wages boards. There are 39 or so wages boards in practice at the moment. So your employees will be covered under um, any of those. So you have to identify what covers your employees and accordingly give them the right salaries, leave, holidays, overtime, maternity benefits, gratuity, retirement. If you have more than 15 employees in your company, then you, the retirement age of your employees will be 60 years. If you have less than 15, then of course you can decide what the retirement age of the employees are going to be. You can also state, look at the termination of employment, discipline reaction that is gonna that you are gonna take. And you it's always advisable that you have grievance handling procedure, a disciplinary procedure. All of that will make your life easier. So getting those in um getting those in place at the start of the business is very important because that will make your life easier. So there is a question. Um, if you obtain a service from a person for a period of time without any signed agreement, but if you have made them payments for a period of, of time, will that kind of service provider be subjected to EPF and ETF? So this is where you have to see whether it's a contract of service or contract for service. You might obtain the services of a person for a particular time period under a contract for service. Okay, like what I said, uh, maybe hiring, uh, giving some work to an um, independent contractor. So say to do your accounts at the end of the year or to paint a building, renovate your workplace, uh, security services. If you have a contract for service with that person for a period of time, then the company, you will not have to pay EPF and ETF. But if, it's a, uh, if you have hired a person for a period of time, it will be a fixed term contract. It can be taken as a fixed term contract and then it will be a, then you have to pay ETF and EPF. So whether you sign an agreement or not really would not matter. Remember I said it can be in writing, it can be verbal, it can be implied. All those are legally binding agreements. So just because you sign, you did not sign, you cannot say we did not have an agreement. If the other party can still show that there had been a verbal agreement or implied agreement, then you know that's it. So, so you'll have to keep that also in mind okay so i think um, my time is up so if there are any quick questions that i can answer uh, i will do so uh, doc, uh, professor rohan yeah uh, excellent presentation professor arusha uh, Thank you. i think you answered all of the questions uh, that's one Yes, and what about one. Yeah. gratuity? Do I have time to answer that, uh, Professor Rahn? Please, by all means, go ahead. Yeah. Yes. So gratuity, you pay if you have a, a continuous, if your employees have a continuous period of five years of service in a company, and the company should have more than 15 employees uh, on any day during the last 12 months. So uh, if you have those conditions, only the employee will be covered under the Gratuity Act. So if your company, if the company has uh, 15 or so employees, more than 15 employees, and, they, and if the employee has a continuous period of five years, then they'll be covered under gratuity. And of course, the company will have to pay them gratuity within 30 days of the employee leaving the company. Excellent. I think um, I'm just trying to um, give you a few highlights. I I'm pretty sure our participants today, they have got a lot of question marks in their mind clear today with this short presentation uh, by Professor Arusha Abhikaram. Let me reiterate a few things she mentioned. Number one, as 
as an empl employer, because most of you guys are heading towards some sort of business at some point of time, right? And you want to make it bigger, grow it, and build a big business in the future. So you must adhere to these legal requirements right from the day one. So that's that's a must. Even though you are a very small company, startup, still there are certain things you have to adhere to. That's number one. Number two, if you do not, for whatever reason, maybe you think short-term benefits or whatever, you will uh, damage your reputation and that will be a permanent blocker for you to develop your company. You lose your reputation. That's not good. Number three, she mentioned very clearly about the uh, contract of employment, right? And she actually gave a template so that you can use it, follow it, and make your life very easy, very clear. So your agreement with your employees is, is transparent, right? There's nothing hidden. It's very clear, and you will not run into problems. So please get uh, these advices to your brains and heart and uh, implement them. And also she mentioned about human resource plan. I'm sure most of you guys, participants, the startup builders, you don't look these things very serious, HR plan and all that, right? And you think it's for big businesses, right? No, you have to start right from the day one. It will be a very simple plan, but you need to have this HR plan. And she also, also mentioned that you need to pick up the right person. Do not pick up the wrong person and you will have a bad apple in your, in your basket. You have all sorts of trouble. How to do that? She also mentioned that put your employees on probation for six months and then you can observe their attitudes, their workmanship, they are, whether they're punctual and all that. Then if they are not, then you can actually get rid of them. So use these tools and apparatus and methods so that you can build your company very successfully. All right, so uh, I think it's a fully blown, uh, compressed presentation, Professor Arosha, as you help a lot for our participants to, to clear up their question marks in the mind because most of these guys are actually uh, more into technical things rather than uh, the legal aspect and the uh, law and all that. So therefore, this is really, really helpful for them to uh, get going. So for that, I'm really appreciative of your time and your um, knowledge sharing today, Professor Arusha. And I hope to pleasure. see you again in the future also. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Wish you all the best, everyone. Thank you. Excellent. All right, then um, shall we, um, of course, um, uh, I will communicate with Professor Arosha about your remaining questions by email and get all of your questions answered by her. And I will communicate back to you by email. All right, thank you and uh, uh, good night to Professor Arosha. All right, then uh, Varangana, it's time to uh, introduce our second speaker today. Dr. Tesara Javadana. Hope my screen is visible. Now it's coming up. Okay. Yep. Good. So our second speaker for the day will be Dr. Tesara Javadana. So Dr. Tesara is a professionally qualified engineer, attorney at law, senior lecturer, research scholar, author, chartered marketer, chartered manager, company secretary as well, a commissioner for oaths, not republic, and a professional counselor. Currently, she serves as the head of the Department of Industrial Management and as the director of Business Research Unit in the Faculty of Business, University of Moratur. Further, she is a fellow member of the Chartered Institute of Marketing UK, fellow member of Chartered Management Institute UK, member of American Marketing Association, associate member of the Institute of Engineering Sri Lanka, Chartered Manager of Chartered Management Institute UK, member of Sri Lanka Institute of Marketing, attorney at law, and a licensed company secretary, 
further a commissioner for oaths and not republic in Sri Lanka. She has also won several prestigious national and international awards in recognition of her involvement in multidisciplinary domains. So this multidisciplinary educational background with various professional qualifications and involvement in these numerous extracurricular activities has made her a unique and successful women professional in the country. So let me cordially invite Dr. Tesara uh, to continue. Unfortunately, she's not so well today, but despite of her illness, uh, she's taking the session. So over to you, madam. Uh, thank you, Varangana. <laughs> thank you, Varangana. I don't know if how long I can speak, um, but we'll try to get, get through as soon much as we can. I'm really sorry for my uh, throat, everybody. So apologies. Varangana, shall we go through the assignment first so that um, everybody knows what to expect in this module? Sure, Is that all right? Can I just share the assignment with everybody? Um, I'm really sorry, everybody, for my um, extremely bad. Uh, Varangana, did you want to read it? Uh, or shall I just put the screen here? I'll share the screen, madam, okay, and explain. Right. Hope my screen is visible. Is that so? Yes, it is. Okay. So this particular uh, individual assignment is about an essay. So let me read the assignment first. Then you can get a better idea on the assignment. This assessment requires you to investigate a business proposition relating to a company of any size and demonstrate your entrepreneurial management knowledge to understand and critically assess the ads you have to select a company. Uh, the submission is through Moodle platform as a PDF file. So aim of this particular individual assignment is uh, to critically assess a business proposition. It might be a new one or an existing product linked to what you are going to learn today. So assignment one task, if I'm explaining what is the assignment is about, students must choose a Sri Lankan owned public company. That means a PLC. Then each PLC uh, will have a website as well as recent annual reports. You can find it through the CSC website which teams can refer uh, to as a part of your research. Each student must write an essay describing the business analysis of their chosen PLC, showing how their chosen corporation creates value for its stakeholders, staff, and customers. So all businesses should be evaluated from a local as well as a global perspective. With a view of further expansion. So your recommendations, what's your V1, the future expansion of the business. Then students must apply a wide range of strategy and management, which may include, but is not limited. So I think my connection also not that much stable. Am I clearly audible? Hello? Yes, you are. Yes. Okay, fine. So uh, we have given a particular set of tools that you can use in your uh, essay. First one is uh, Porter's Positioning School, Generic Strategy for Corporations Position. Secondly, you can use Pestel Analysis. Then you can use SWOT, Porter's Five Forces Analysis of the Industry. Uh, where the corporation is within and the Boston metrics and ANSOF metrics. I hope you are going to learn all this today, so don't get panic. A comprehensive analysis of management tools plus any other models, theories that you know. 
So you should demonstrate how these models, theories, and concept, plus any additional research and analysis, help this particular selected PLC to create sustainable long-term value, uh, especially for the stakeholders in a global context. And this should be professional, engaging, and persuasive one. About sub submission deadlines, uh, yeah, the due date is 30th October and particular word count is 20%. All right. So this is about the assignment, madam. Yes, thank you, um, Parangana. So what you have to do is you have to choose a particular company, um, preferably a Sri Lankan-owned one, and then do this analysis, uh, and which we will look at in the in terms of the um, various theories and models. So this is the things we are going to look at. Um, um, I'm not going to read them. As you can see, you, you, it's probably easier for you to read by yourself than myself. So the entrepreneur was found in the 16th century. It's been described as someone coming up with a new novel idea, a novel concept, and then taking a, making a profit out of it and doing a business. All these PowerPoints will be shared so you can read through. So like as we all know, it's someone who sees an opportunity creates an organization to cater to that opportunity and make money of it. So this is the actual definition of entrepreneurship. So there's this um, always debate about whether an entrepreneur is born or can somebody be made into an entrepreneur. Let's say there is inborn talent then we should be able to identify the main characters. Like let's say, oh, you have the characteristics, so others don't have to apply. You are the one we have chosen. So from kindergarten, we can choose them and stream them, oh, this is the entrepreneurial talent at once. And the others, oh, you don't have to apply. Or else, if you can make anybody an entrepreneur, then we should be able to teach any, any person in the uh, world should be able to become an entrepreneur because we have a course for them. We can have incubators for them. So that is also not the case. No, we can't spot them and also we can't train them. So what is the answer? It's something in between. You have to have the inborn talents and then the education. I think which is why what Professor Rohan Muna Singers, this actual course is going to benefit you. You are going to learn things as well as you have the talent which we can explore. By any chance, if I'm not audible, you must tell me, okay? Because I don't even know. Varangana, at any time, please let me know. Huh? Sure, madam. Okay. Thank you. So, risks. Entrepreneurs are known for taking any risks. Why? If it's so risky, why do people still do it? Because you can see many examples of businesses which they start with a lot of money and end up failing. We will try to compare a failed business with a successful one. Fail with check the value. The reasons of failure, poor planning. Failure to analyze the market. Market can be a Market can be a good thing. It is 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 a good so this from the beginning, it's going to fail because of these three main reasons. But when you look at a successful venture, you can see they have set clear goals and objectives. They have a very good knowledge of the business and competitors. Dr. Pesara, uh, 
Yes. Do you have yeah. a presentation? I'm sharing it, sir. Ah uh, no, we uh, cannot see it on screen. Oh, I'm the... so sorry. Yeah. All this time I've been. Uh, that's why I asked us. Don't can worry. Can you see it? Oh, okay. I am so yeah. sorry. Is, yeah. is... We can see it now. Oh Thank dear, you. dear, dear. Thank now, you. um, Barangara, you have to do the needful and go go back. <laughs> Uh, just give a brief outline. May Balan make a make a contact here. Contents. Um. So so did you have to go through listening to me? <laughs> um. Right. May uh, this is the entrepreneur definition. This is how you have the entrepreneur in terms of a layman's term. This is the definition. <coughs> so this is the um, de debate that I was talking to you about, whether they are born or made. Stop me at any time if you can't hear. Kaurari, who me Yes, yes, can I? Arangat, can hear? Yes, madam, we can hear. All right, okay. You have to time to time tell me. Because I'm uh, probably half dead. But... Madam, we can't see the presentation slides now. Yeah, I, I, I thought as much. It stopped for me also. Can you see now? Yes, now it's visible. It's not going for a slideshow. Now it is on presentation mode, madam. Right, perfect. So this is what I was telling you. <clears throat> so we can spot people or we can train them if it's either a born or inborn, uh, a trained trailer, but it is actually a combination of between the education as well as your inborn talents or the passion. Right, and then we have entrepreneurs with risks. And like I said, when you look at the comparison between a failed venture, you can see that poor planning, not analyzing the market, the emptiness of the structure versus a successful entrepreneurial venture with clear goals and objectives and a good knowledge of the business and competitors with a strong business ethics can be the difference between the success or the failure. So, it's a big difference between the two because failed business takes a great risk. Okay? So this failed entrepreneurial businesses are more risky. Successful me, risky. Yeah. The slides are moving yes. a little bit fast. So there's a message on the chat box as well. Little bit it is a little bit fast. 
ඒ පාරට දැන් ඉස්සෙල්ලා කියපු ඒ ස්ලයිඩ්ස් එක තමයි දැන් ගියේ ඒගොල්ලන්ට එක තේරුණ නැද්ද දැන් ඉඳන් තමයි පටන් ගත්තේ කලින් මම කියපු ඒ වැස් ස්ලයිඩ්ස් එක තමයි මම ඇරියේ I hope okay. the students understand what you are saying ඔය පොඩ්ඩක් ඒක කියන්න ඒගොල්ලන් ඒරෙන්න නැද්ද දැන් හරි so what we have already discussed the slides have been gone api danata katha karapu slides tika tamai tika ikmanta giya api metan indan slowly we can move on thank you so the fail business takes a great risk whereas successful business even though there is a risk it is a calculated intelligent risk avadanama tamai namuth ara api kiyapu me risk eke tiyana මාකට් එක දැනගෙන ස්ට්‍රැටජි එක එක කරන ඉඳලා එතන තියෙනවා පොඩි රිස්ක් එකේ අවදානමේ අඩුවක් පොඩි ඒක අර තරම්ම දරුණු නැහැ right so it is there the risk is there it is possible to fail but ලොකු රිස්ක් එකක් කෝ ෆේලියර් එකක් අඩු කරගන්න පුළුවන් මිනිමයිස් කරගන්න පුළුවන් if you have calculated ගණනය කරපු අවදානමක් ගත්තොත් if you can take the risk in a calculated manner the risk can be minimized so these are the calculated risks the risk can be explained as a careful consideration of all the different costs wenne pulang okkoma wiya dan tikai apita labiya labena pulang okkoma laaba ekathu karala calculate karot apita puluwani ape me risk eka kochcharata kiyala gananaya karala so there are different ways to identify such risks because there are different solutions or benefits or disadvantages which are the entrepreneur's responsibility to identify prior to starting up the business mame istarahata painda kali balanna one monawada mage wate tiyenne ewa thamai api dan me ada ara models walin katha karanna yanne because the decisions you make can lead you to success or it can bring you failure it's up to you whether you are jumping to success or going to fall down in failure so with that let's look at these different models api apa vela tibbot assignment ekata yanawa namun mulinma assignment ekak miss warangana ta explain karanne kiwe etukoda ogulanta idea ekak tiyenawa thora gattu mokak hari dan hitunko lankawema company dsi hari deal mahari thamana the companies the sri lanka no nan honda ira api api ewa me katha karada eke api kiwa global for perspective kohomada api lokide yanne ape business ekak yana kota api ape business analyze karana external environment organization ke pita ta tiyena ewa analyze karana pestal wale environmental scanning අපේ දැනට කරගෙන ඒවා බලන්න අපිට five forces තියෙනවා competitor supply analysis තියෙනවා. ඒකෙන් එක බලනවා බය වෙන්න එපා. internal එහෙම නැත්නම් micro analysis එකක් කරන්න. SWOT එක. SWOT එක ඔයගලන්ට මට පහත් පහත් තිබුණත් ඔයගලන් එක්කම SWOT එක කරන්න තිබ්බා. SWOT එකක් කියන්නේ Tamange strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. ඒවා අපේ organization එකට බලන්න හැටි අපි දැන් බලමු. හරි. PESTEL කියන්නේ competitor කියන්නේ SWOT කියන්නේ ඔහොමද යූස් කරන්නේ කියලා දැන් එකින් එක බලන්න. SWOT කිව් යන්නේ strengths. මොනවාද අපි what are the uh, strengths we have as an organization? What are their weaknesses? What are the opportunities they have? What are the threats they have? So what could be strengths? it could be a structural one. It could be their brand name. It could be their market. There's no competitor competitors. So maybe they get some very cheap supplies whatever it is the strengths or it could be even the employees it could be the decision making top board unit that you have to identify then the weaknesses what are the issues that can bring in the weakness in this organization what is bringing you down with the competitors are you not good with the technology do you not have enough money to invest what are, what are the things that stops you maybe the market is not well people are not having enough money to purchase from you what are the opportunities how can you grow into in the future what are the things you can develop 
what threats that is stopping you from growing what are the things that maybe legal threats maybe competitive threats maybe your own people are starting up new businesses people are leaving the country any type may have identify karna may have mukad the swot ke kai ne micro analysis internal analysis organization ke atule no other way so what is the purpose of that you have to convert weaknesses into strengths strengths into opportunities threats into opportunities etura thamai edi oru karapla etura recommendations ऑर्गनाइजेशन <laughs> स्टारबाक्स मैनेजमेंट कॉपरेट कलचर उटसाइडन task is day to day how they deal with your organization how they affect it right so we have the general environment which you can look at through through the pesters it can be internationally maybe the different law sea laws different countries have wars different countries have different other uh, legislations which could affect you anything that happens internationally whether in a competitive manner or not that affects your organization is international so this provides new competitors customers and you can look at when you are going global when you are thinking of taking your organization to the global market these are the things you have to consider then the technological how the new advancements of the technology assist or bring a threat to your organization how it could because you have your own plc how that could be affected with new technology if you can also improve you can do better if you don't have the resources funds then how does it affect socio culture attitudes of the people new trends how the culture if people are trying to eat more healthy food and your organization is about fast food then how does it affect you so all these things that the demographics of the so society or the culture how it affects your organization economy with the recession in the other countries or with the economic downturn currently we are experiencing with the taxes how does it affect your organization because the buying power of the customer has been affected people are unemployed people don't owe, don't have cash flow so how does it affect then you have the legal environment different laws are being implemented different taxes are being implemented how does it affect your chosen organization environmentally it could be the natural resources it could be the natural disasters 
what sort of things does it affect you then that is the general environment then we, we look at the task environment right so with that we can do a situation analysis what is happening ekar tama ara models then api models dekha bala sort baluwa pestal baluwa micro and macro internal and external then we are looking at the task environment through porter's five forces this is michael porter's five forces talks about competitor rival substitute products new entrants new suppliers buyers how the competitors if you choose let's say you are choosing uh, the same coffee who are your competitors people who are also in the same business coffee bean can be your competitor substitutes if people bring uh, tea instead of coffee new entrants another company another com com company is coming up the suppliers who are supplying you coffee beans or the other um, cups and things the buyers if they all this we don't want coffee then they have the upper hand all these things you can analyze so this port is five forces brings a framework for competitive strategy one second my uh, our point got stuck again okay. i don't have laser in my powerpoint madam yes sir but i'm going my powerpoint is not coming i'm just oh, trying okay. to we yeah, thought it's... that you're speaking and we can't hear you I no mean... no I, sorry yeah it's not getting shared again or i think it's i have no idea why it's doing that. Did I send you the PowerPoint by any chance? You can't share it. Send. I'll check, madam. I hope I will be able to share. It seems.
Dr. Tesar, we can uh, share uh, if you send uh, the PowerPoint. I'm just, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna make it so save it on my desktop, hoping okay. that might, because maybe the pen drive has an issue. Okay, let's see if that. Okay. Might work. Okay. 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 Okay.
what your entrepreneurial management knowledge you are not just a manager you are not just an entrepreneur you are showing you are a managerial entrepreneur how to critically assess critically assess means you have to show the good as well as the bad you are critically assessing you are being neutral and telling what is good what is bad and saying whether the product or the service that they are offering is adequate they get the big heart karna vadi unda da ne hari mukata the new or existing product then the vikunata deyak wenna puluwa issara hata you can suggest something new right so what are you doing you have to choose a plc it's good if they have a website good if they have an annual report so that you can get data from the central bank or the annual report right then you can read from them so you can talk about the chosen corporation creates value cart to the shareholders staff customers tum bol lakin how the shareholders the people who have invested the money staff are the employees customers are the people who are benefiting so you have to say what these people are doing in this organization offering that product or service is bringing value for shareholders how by bringing them more profit staff how by ensuring they have job security they are getting paid they get bonuses they, they can be promoted they can climb up the ladder customers giving value for their money giving quality service or product you are to be evaluating this organization in a local and a global perspective with the view of further expansion so your recommendation should or must include how this company can go to the global market how you can take it to at least small divs asia how you can grow how you can expand we karana wede hinam undai ek thava durata athne ma karot we can go further so that you can do we karana wede identify karanne ko mada swot analysis with the micro internal analysis pestel macro external analysis four to five forces to identify the five competitors and there are other these boston matrix and ends of which you can i we really can't go through because of the um, time as well as it's not really necessary it's just to show <coughs> as a product where you can go in i think in my original powerpoint i had it which we can share if you like it is how you can go further whether the product is at the stage bcg matrix and it very simple thama patang ganna thana growth stage ke di me introductory stage ke di natham growth stage ke di natham mature stage ke di natham decline stage ke di introductory ke anne mokad when you are starting up a business not a lot of profit you don't know the market everything is new growth is it's like at the introductory it's a question mark growth is like a star you are glowing and glowing you are growing up you are getting more customers you are selling more products so you are expanding then you come to a mature state cash cow stage cash cow kiyanne like a cow you have brought the cow in then you just have to give some grass or punna kutika thana kula tikak dunna ma ela dena ge you get milk and all the cow dung and all those so cash cow is like mature stage invest karala ever right you are getting more then the decline stage decline is like a dog you have a dog really old dog nothing he doesn't even bark much under the dit yang in a stage of an organization it's going down so this boston matrix is literally about that whether your organization is at the introductory question mark or growing star mark or the cash cow mature stage where you're just making money or it is actually decline most of the plcs will be in the star or the cash cow so just an analysis on that with that you have to show that you feel this company if it follows these these things clearly you have to make some recommendations from all the lectures that you followed you would have heard so many people in their practical uh, experiences that they share 
how this particular organization can be improved to go global how you can take it to the next level to make more money to benefit whom the shareholders staff employees and the customers how you can give them back <clears throat> the benefits with your recommendations in thousand words so it uh, there's not a lot you can write just do the very brief introduction from one paragraph what is the company all about then you do quickly do a swot to tell us what's happening internally then do a general or a, a pestel macro environment analysis using pestel say what's what are the external things that's um, taking place then tell the task environment using quotas five forces then you make some recommendations say the company from what you see is at this stage growth stage or mature stage and now it's high time for company to go global how do they go, go global you can make some recommendations on how they can do it with through online or through I, I don't want to give you answers you think of many different ways and do the recommendations all the other things are like theory but the recommendations is should come from yourself from what you have learned from your heart then you can do a conclusion say this is the company i did the study for, and this is my conclusion within thousand words very hard to limit it to thousand words you can do it so now if you have any questions you can do it no it's not compulsory like it says in the it's preferable you, it's preferable to choose one why because you have a web page and annual report which you can access so you can it's easy for you to make references but if you feel that the uh, another company you have, can do the same it's fine but most other companies may have gone global already multi multinational company ka coca cola are going global anyway mcdonald's or coca cola have already gone global so what we are suggesting is for a small company to go global right so it's a result it's good if you can choose a smaller company then you can give more recommendations to them any other questions excellent i think the show time thank you i'm really just, sorry just begun <coughs> it's the short time i would say now it's time for our participants to put all your efforts together uh, things you have learned so far in the course and um, engage in this assignment so uh, thank you very much dr tesara despite your bad health um, you, you nevertheless you wanted to go ahead and deliver this presentation and give more time for the participants to engage in this assignment so I'm really appreciative of your commitment today. And I know where words to say thank you uh, for that. And uh, I just want to reiterate. Uh, I just want to reiterate a few things uh, Dr. Tesar mentioned today to our uh, audience. Um, number one, the, the entrepreneurs are, are they born? Um, entrepreneurs or are they made entrepreneurs right so and she clearly mentioned you need a um, bit of both right it's, it's good if you have some instincts in your genes right as an entrepreneur right if not uh, then it will be a little difficult for you to like uh, create an entrepreneur in you uh, by learning all these things but with commitment and passion and dedication you can make yourself a good entrepreneur right so therefore that question is cleared um then uh, she mentioned um, the decisions you make as a entrepreneur as somebody who is running a business can lead to success or failure right have you thought have you thought of that in that aspect i'm sure we are taking decisions daily basis right leave leave aside this entrepreneurial thing we are taking decisions all the time, daily basis. And you can put it on a paper. Which of these decisions actually 
worked well, successful, and which of these decisions actually end up in failure. Do it yourself and figure that out. And you will see how, how much of these things, like as a percentage, end up in a failure. Now, day-to-day -day life, certain things are all right. So we don't take it very, very serious. We anyway go ahead. But in a business, it's very serious. If you make a critical bad decision, you are putting yourself on backseat immediately and it will be very, very difficult for you to come back. All right. And mind you, the Sri Lankan culture is also uh, around you, right? Failure means it's a very, very bad thing in Sri Lanka, in our culture, but not so in other countries, right? There are countries where if you fail, nobody cares and you can get going, stand up on your feet, right? And try it out again. But in Sri Lanka, if you fail, it is very difficult cultural shock for you, right? So therefore, it's very important that uh, you make sure 70, 80, 90 percent of your decisions actually end up uh, bringing success to your company. That's why she mentioned these three different tests, SWOT, Festel, and uh, Porter's Five Forces. And I'm sorry we didn't have time uh, for Dr. Tesara to give you a, a, a breadth and depth in that discussion. Um, she could have been given more time to leisurely take you through these tests. But I think she mentioned uh, all these things, right? So that you understand uh, how they are fitting together and uh, uh, how they affect your company's growth. So let me put it in this perspective. Certain days when you go out on the road, you cannot see the road, right? Because of fog. When you engage in a business, it's like that. You cannot actually see the future, predict where you will be in two years' time, five years' time, right? It's like trying to see through the fog. But now, if you want to clear up the fog and to see through the fog, right, a distance. You need to do this analysis. SWOT, Pestel, and Porter's Five Forces. We will make some of these uh, supplementary material for you to study, right, um, on the course website, and also we'll email you these resources uh, so that you can study them leisurely. What is SWOT analysis? Already, the professor has. Uh, um, given uh, now we can distribute uh, PowerPoint slides so that you can learn it but additional material we'll send you so that you can leisurely go through all these additional materials and understand thoroughly what is sort how to do that what is special how to do that what are the quarters five forces you will be a fully blown entrepreneur with all these knowledge and skills. If you do this assignment, right, take it very seriously, do it um, uh, with all your effort, knowledge, then you will immediately become, you put yourself in a, in a better seat as an entrepreneur, right? You will be better prepared to uh, develop your business. And also, uh, Dr. Tesar mentioned different stages of your company. So those who are actually running your small businesses, you can figure out whether you are in the star stage or the uh, uh, cash cow stage or probably in uh, the, uh, the old dog state, right? So it's very important to understand your position and to change it to probably cash cow and have a plan from where you are today to the cash cow state, all right? So it's extremely important. So with all these... Uh, knowledge and uh, information provided today by Dr. Tisara, I think you will have a better chance of being uh, a, a very skillful, successful entrepreneur in the future. So for that, I'm really uh, thankful uh, for Dr. Tisara for coming up and uh, delivering her presentation today, despite her bad health. Thank you, Dr. Tisara. So, with that, uh, we come to the end of the session today. And I want to um, uh, remind you again, next uh, Saturday, 
uh, next week and most probably is our last weekend of the program. And Saturday we have uh, Mr. Larry Udell from uh, US and also uh, Mr. Tasim Rafi and probably Mr. Sudat Di Silva to talk to you. All right, then uh, let's wind up the session for this evening. Thank you very much for joining in and have a good night. I'll see you next Saturday.